Hi there, in this video I'd like to talk about the topic of human evolutionary history and its relation to our diet. So what you will notice is that in a lot of communities like the paleo community, the carnivore community and more broadly just in society in general, in the media, you know, television shows, films, newspapers, whatever, the reference point tends to be, when we're talking about diet, the reference point tends to be, you know, hunter-gatherers in Europe, hunting animals, hunting, killing big game, eating animal foods, eating animal flesh, as well as gathering some occasional like fruits, berries, like shoots, nuts, seeds, that kind of stuff. And that's the paleo diet in essence. And you know, it makes sense in one perspective, like because we're living in this modern society now where we're bombarded with so much information um, that we don't even know right from wrong in many areas of life, like diet in particular. And there's even a thing called agnotology. Agnosis is when you you don't believe something. So agnotology is like the study of how to sow confusion in the public so as to lead, lead them in whatever direction you like for profit or for your benefit. So this is something that companies do, governments do. It's basically the funding of studies that sow disinformation and that confuse people so that you as a company or you as an industry or as a government can put out your own belief then and profit from that and get people to believe that even if it's false. So we're living in this age where we're surrounded by disinformation, we're surrounded in confusion, you know, we don't know what's right or wrong. So it makes sense for for people to look back to the past, to look at our ancestors when they lived in kind of a more authentic society or they lived in a more authentic lifestyle and they were fully connected with nature. For us that represents truth, you know, so it makes total sense to look back in order to model our diet and what our ancestors ate and how they lived. So yeah, it's right, you know, it's right to do that. We look back to our ancestors and we see what they ate and I think we can get valuable information there. What I see though is that in those dietary communities that I mentioned and more broadly in society, the consensus is to look back to ancient Europe and to the hunter-gatherer lifestyle that we lived here. You know, we hunted the woolly mammoth, we hunted other big animals, we ate them, killed them, ate them, we cooked animal flesh and also gathered some fruits and berries. And later then of course came agriculture as well where we domesticated some animals and we drank milk, dairy, you know, cheese, we, we got eggs and we grew grain as well, you know. So our diet shifted even further then. But for me, like the elephant in the room in this case, in this scenario, is that people tend to ignore what came before Europe. You know, I think we all largely agree that human genesis didn't occur in Europe. Maybe there are some out there who have like that belief. There's a belief for everything essentially, but the consensus is that humanity evolved and originated in Africa. So we were in Europe for like a few 10,000 years, maybe like 30, 40,000 years. That's a sliver of time in the grand scale of our evolutionary history as a species. Before that, we came from Africa and we evolved in Africa for millions of years. Perhaps in the latest phases of our evolution in Africa, before we came to Europe, we were in the savannas on the plains of Africa, hunting there as well. But before that, before even that, came the jungles of Africa, where it's believed that we originated. And a book that talks about our evolutionary history in Africa, that's a really great read, is Return to the Brain of Eden by Tony Wright and Graham Ginn. That book talks about our evolutionary dietary history, you know, how our diet evolved as we evolved, and how our diet shifted as we moved onto the plains of Africa and into Europe. So the idea being that for millions of years, for like 99% of our evolutionary history, we were situated in the jungles of Africa, eating and living there. And the thing about the jungles of Africa, even today, but 
possibly even more so in the past, is that they're very contiguous, they're situated on the equator, it's warm there all year round, there's good sun there all year round. Fruit and plant life in general grows there in absolute abundance. Fruit, there's so many varieties at the tropics, at the equator, that it's just an incredible abundance and there's fruit growing all year round in that area. And there's also other plant life, other vegetable matter. So the idea put forth in that book, and which I tend to believe is that we evolved in the jungles of Africa for millions of years and we consumed a high fruit, raw plant-based diet during that time. And that that was the diet that our species emerged on, was a diet high in fruit, high in raw plant foods. So, you know, high in, high in fruits, uh, leafy greens, vegetables, you know, some nuts and seeds, that kind of thing, you know. And that's the diet that we see in our relatives as well, our closest relatives, like the bonobos especially, also the chimps. Chimps have been seen to hunt some animals, especially in recent times. But personally, I believe that could be due to habitat fragmentation and adaptation, changing behaviours, but that's a topic for another video. So that's how I see, you know, there's like a gaping hole in our appeal to our, our ancestral history and behaviours. You know, we tend to look to Europe, to the hunter-gatherers. When they came much later, it was a very small sliver of our evolutionary history. Before that, we lived in Africa for millions of years. And there I believe that the fruit was in season all year round, that we had an abundance of fruit and vegetables, and that we thrived on that diet, you know. And in the book, Return to the Brain of Eden, the author suggests that this had very positive effects on our development, on our evolution, that they suggest that it was fruit that was responsible for a tripling in our brain size over a short period of time. And this stands in contrast to another uh, mainstream belief that we have that that we have that it was cooking of animal flesh and consumption of animal flesh that led to a tripling in brain size. But on face value, this doesn't really make much sense because when you look to um, like studies that are coming out now about berries and fruit, you know, berries especially, their health effects, they tend to be very conducive to brain health. You know, they protect against neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. They improve cognitive function, they improve focus, they improve clarity, all of that, you know. They're just very health, healthful and um, beneficial for the brain, especially, but also the body as a whole. When you compare that to, let's say, animal flesh, animal products, they, they have an emerging link with degenerative diseases of the brain, especially, but also other health, um, other diseases in the body, but with regards to the brain, they're being linked with dementia and with Alzheimer's. So they're being shown to be neurodegenerative, whereas berries and fruit are being shown to be neuroprotective. So it makes sense to me that the food groups that are neurodegenerative wouldn't be responsible for an increase in brain growth over time, in a lifetime or collectively or over eons of time, you know. Quite the opposite. If they're degenerative, they they eat away at the brain, they they reduce the brain's health and and um, coherence. So yeah, I think it just doesn't make sense on face value. I, th I, I personally believe that humanity evolved on a high fruit diet in the jungles of Africa and that that's our true origins, that you know, the Garden of Eden as it were, that we originated in the jungles of Africa where fruit was in season all year round and that's how we thrive and what the order suggests in the book is that at a certain point possibly due to climatic changes humanity was forced to leave that embryonic jungle environment where everything was provided for you know where it was warm all year round abundant fruits and vegetables the finest foods available at a certain point we were pushed out from that environment they suggest perhaps due to climate changes like cooling or warming that led to you know, fragmentation of the habitat or, or led to us having to leave for whatever reason. For whatever reason, we did leave and we did migrate out onto the savannas and then eventually to Europe. So whatever the reason is, when we left, our diet necessarily shifted, you know. There was less fruits in the new habitats that we found, less fruits and vegetables. We had to rely increasingly on hunting animals, on 
eating and cooking and eating animal flesh and that the order suggests came with shifts in our mentality as well we weren't getting many of the health protective effects of the fruit and one of the things about fruit as well is that many of the compounds in them they temper the activity of steroids in the body you know so steroids are linked in with aging they're linked in with sexuality and they're linked in with stress and aggression and fear these kind of emotions so the idea is as we left that embryonic eden environment our consciousness shifted from one that was more edenic more serene more divine even towards one that was more imbued with fear and negative emotions or you could say sin that word is a lot of baggage but you could use it to refer to just negativity in general so it's funny how it also ties in with religious archetypes and mythology you know the garden of eden banishment from the garden knowledge of good and evil you know the development of negativity in our consciousness and how that could possibly link in with diet which i think just makes total sense you know i think it just makes a lot of sense it's very realistic that you know we are what we eat so what we put into our bodies changes us not only our phys physical self but our mental state our consciousness too you know and i think that's a process that carried on until we got to europe and then we developed agriculture and then you know modern society started to, to develop until we got to where we are today where there's so much fear and negativity in the world and there's so much confusion you know and i think a lot of that is down to our diet you know and i think where we're at now is it's about making a choice you know coming back to that garden of eden diet if we choose to if we wish to you know and i think it's a diet that will confer a lot of benefits it's about coming back to who we are it's about remembering our true evolutionary history the the largest extent of it that 99 percent that we spent in africa in the jungles consuming fruit um all year round i think it's about yeah coming back to who we are it's about reunion and um, but at a higher level having integrated the lessons that we've learned along this journey of separation and confusion um, and all of that so yeah you know that's that i could take that in a lot of directions like really i have that temptation in my videos and i'm trying to actually stop that and make the videos more concise and, and limited to one topic at a time so i could go in a lot of directions but i'd rather not i think that's that clears up that area for this video so you know i think it's just about not being tunnel vision than only seeing back a few ten thousand years and thinking that's somehow what we need to base our diet on that came much later and that i think that was out of necessity it was an adaptation that that as we moved north you know there was less fruit and we had to adapt to hunt animals and kill them and that i, f I believe goes against our fundamental nature that was the fall from grace the fall of mankind so i believe it's about realizing that it's about realizing that our evolutionary history goes back so much further and there's so much information that we can, can infer from that that kind of oh, balances out or even overrides that more recent sliver of time so it's about that you know and i think it's about getting back to our species specific diet high in fruit high in raw living foods you know as as it is said in the essene gospel of peace eat only that which is living because life comes from life whereas death comes from death you know if you eat that which is living it will quicken you if you eat that which is dead it will slowly kill you you know and i think that's what it's about so yeah that's it for this video i hope that was insightful um i'll be covering more topics in this area you know diet high fruit diet species specific diet evolutionary history because i think it's a very interesting area as well you know i think there's a lot of truth that needs to come out there that's kind of covered over and it's a very either disempowering or empowering area depending on the choices that we make because diet is everything you know we are what we eat literally so yeah that's it if you liked the video give it a thumbs up be sure to subscribe for more content like this and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching